Hello, I'm Sula, and this is part of my continuing series on dark sky places for astronomers for stargazing and astrophotography. This one is about Stanislaus National Forest in California in the United States, elevation about 3,000 feet or 915 meters. It takes about two and a half to three hours to drive to Stanislaus from the San Francisco Bay Area, and it's only about 15 minutes from there to the Big Oak Flat entrance to Yosemite National Park in California. Lightpollutionmap.app rates this area as Bortle 3 and Zasteria, um, which gets its data from NOAA's satellite, rates it as a Bortle 2, but I think Stanislaus is more like Bortle 3. So you're probably thinking if you're only 15 minutes from the Big Oak Flat entrance to Yosemite, why not just stargaze in Yosemite National Park? Well, Yosemite is one of the most spectacular places on Earth, no doubt about it, but unfortunately it's not a good place to stargaze, not just because of the towering granite cliffs and majestic and tall lodgepole pines and stately giant sequoia trees that will block the sky, but mostly because Yosemite Valley is overrun with traffic, people, light pollution, pizza parlors, hotels, lodges, eating facilities, and my goodness, John Muir must be turning over in his grave. <laughs> there are opportunities for wide field astrophotography there, and you can get smashing Milky Way shots, but just to use a telescope there would be difficult. There are only three exceptions in my opinion. Glacier Point Road, which is only open May to November, is one, and then you park your car and it's a short paved trail to the point. Number two would be possibly Wawona in a meadow there, and number three would be on Tioga Pass Road, either pulling out at Olmstead Point, but you'd still have traffic driving by occasionally, or Tenaya Lake, which has a lot of people. Those are the only three places that I think would be suitable for stargazing with the telescope. Of course, you can backpack into Yosemite and get to some darker places if backpacking, but you can only carry so much gear while backpacking. So on your way to Yosemite, I recommend that you stop in Stanislaus National Forest, maybe at Buck Meadows Lodge, also known as Yosemite Westgate Lodge, and try stargazing from there. You can stay at the lodge, which is pretty nice, except they, like almost all lodges, are addicted to outdoor lighting. Or you can camp at nearby Sweetwater Campground, which is wide open for viewing the sky, or the less open Lost Claim Campground, or the Pines Campground. These all have first-come, first-served campsites that are fairly well spaced apart. If those campgrounds are full, the next place heading toward Yosemite National Park is the Rush Creek Lodge, which is lit up like a Christmas tree. It does not look like a good place to even attempt to stargaze. Shortly after Rush Creek, as you head towards the park, there are some other lit up places. And then you enter the park at the Westgate entrance, and there are campgrounds near that entrance. There's Merced Campground, Crane Flat, and Hogden Meadow, but the campsites are very close together, very little privacy and nowhere to put a telescope. In fact, Yosemite National Park has 13 campgrounds and I've camped at many of them. I've camped at Hogden Meadow, Crane Flat, Tamarack Flat years ago, Upper Pines or Lower Pines, I, I can't remember which one in the valley, and none of those was suitable for stargazing. And I've camped at Tuolumne Meadows many years ago, um, but many times. It's wide open. Tuolumne Meadows is a part of the park on Tioga Road, and it has a clear view of the sky and would make an excellent place for astrophotography. But you can't just traipse across the meadow. It's not allowed. And there aren't many places to set up a telescope in that area. I've tried. Maybe the parking lot for Limbert Dome the Tuolumne Meadows campground is impossible since, like many of the other campgrounds in Yosemite, it, it's blocked by trees and the sites are too close together. And 
Of course, people camping there have lots of lights. Believe me, I've tried to stargaze there before. There is a backpacker's campground at Hetch Hetchy that's wide open. If you've never heard of Hetch Hetchy, it's a part of Yosemite National Park that was once a beautiful valley that rivaled Yosemite Valley before it was flooded to provide drinking water for the San Francisco Bay Area. Hetch Hetchy is darker than Yosemite Valley and it's more open, but the park closes the evergreen road that goes down there at dark and you would need to be a backpacker if you wanted to stay down there after dark, which is a shame because it's the most open camping area in the park and the other campgrounds are crowded together, no privacy, nowhere to put your telescope and the sky is mostly blocked is the main thing. And of course, lodging in Yosemite Park has a lot of lights and the valley itself has a lot of light pollution. So it's best to look for a place before entering Yosemite National Park. When driving toward the park, you pass Don Pedro Reservoir and it has a campground, Moccasin Point Campground, and it's just 130 miles or so from San Francisco and it's a Bortle 3 site, and the campground is on the reservoir, so it has a clear view of the sky. And it's very dry there for most of the year. It receives very little rain. And passing Don Pedro Reservoir, you go up the harrowing and terrifying Old Priest Grade, and you pass through the town of Big Oak Flat and the cute little town of Groveland, and there are some open areas around there, but there's also a lot of development and light. But if you continue just past Groveland, you can stay at Buck Meadows Lodge, also known as Westgate Lodge. And there's a wide open area just past the lodge with an open view of the sky. And it's away from the lodge lighting. It seemed like an ideal place, so I set up my 10-inch Dobsonian there, to go by. but it was a little too close to Highway oh, 120, and there was car. a parade of cars all endlessly passing by, and the constant drone of highway noise. The car headlights weren't shining in my eyes or anything like that. That oh, wasn't bothering me, but the highway noise was very loud and disturbing, and I, I didn't like it, so I only lasted maybe two hours. I found another open area near Buck Meadows, the, uh, past the cabins, farther away from Highway 120 that was more suitable for stargazing or astrophotography. But be aware that there are bears in this area, so don't leave any food out. Don't start snacking. <laughs> Last night we heard a huge racket. Here's why this dumpster doesn't have a bear-proof lock. And a bear got into it. And... The bear pooed all over the place. You can also set up your telescope on the opposite side of Highway 120 at a wide open area at the U.S. Forest Service Groveland District Office. It has a clearing around it for wide open views of the sky and there's a dirt road nearby that you could pull into for privacy and away from the car headlights. You can also try Ferretti Road or Aurora Street. I think Buck Meadows has great potential for um, stargazing and also their Sweetwater Campground in Stanislaus National Forest. They're both dark and they usually have clear skies during the day. Their recreational opportunities are endless. You can hike, swim, horseback ride, or just relax by the South Fork Tuolumne River. You can visit Carlon Falls on Evergreen Road to Hetch Hetchy. Today we're in Yosemite National Park on the road that goes to Hetch Hetchy, the reservoir for San Francisco's drinking water. And we stopped here at Conlin Falls. It's a three mile trail to a waterfall.
And you can also enter Yosemite National Park at the Big Oak Flat entrance. And you can turn onto Tioga Pass Road for ample hiking opportunities. Right at that junction um, where you turn off onto Tioga Road is a meadow behind the Crane Flat area where you can see great gray owls or you can set up your telescope there if you get as far away from that gas station as possible. And if you keep going about another 40 minutes, there's a great hiking opportunity at Porcupine Creek to an outstanding view of the famous Half Dome without even hiking it. drive back to Buck Meadows or Sweetwater Campground or one of the dirt roads around Stanislaus National Forest for a splendid evening of stargazing. So the traffic noise was a little disturbing, but I think Buck Meadows and Sweetwater Campground or just some of the dirt roads or pullouts near Sweetwater make an excellent place to stargaze or to take astro photos. The main drawbacks anywhere around there are not so much the sky quality, which will be exceptional, but the limitations imposed by localized lighting, especially around the lodges and amenities that go along with the lodging. As long as you can get on a dirt road away from the lodges, the skies are dark and they're usually clear. They only get around 30 inches of rain per year in that area, and most of it occurs in the winter time, with the summers being hot and dry. I hope you enjoyed it and that you found this information useful. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.